Tony Romo is the most hated QB in NFL history. He's also the most loved QB in NFL history. He may have been a better basketball player than he was a quarterback. He went to a Division I AA school, didn't receive an invite to the combine. Good none for Gretchen Wieners, bye. Went anyway and never heard his name called during the draft. He spent years on the bench before getting any action. Got action from Jessica Simpson. Pissed off everyone by taking her on a vacation before a playoff game and never got past the divisional round. He got Wally pipped, retired as a cowboy and a Dallas Maverick, became the most beloved broadcaster in the world and became the most hated broadcaster in the world. This is the story of the most polarizing QB in NFL history, and that's coming up right after this. Summer is just around the corner, and the nice weather means it's time to hit up your boys. No, not your roll dogs. I'm talking about your boys down there. And now Manscaped is offering different levels of care with three versions of the lawnmower: the 3.0 Plus, the 4.0 Pro, and the 5.0 Ultra. So what are the levels of the groom game? The 3.0 has that skin safe technology to reduce the risk of nicks and cuts and got that rubber grip for ultimate control. Next up, the 4.0 has a beast of a motor and up to 60 minutes of runtime and has the travel lock that the 3.0 doesn't. No more battery draining. Plus the 4.0 has quick wireless charging. And finally, the 5.0 is the big leagues of ball trimming with the interchangeable dual skin safe blades, the trimmer and the foil blade to cut down hair of every length. I use the foil blade and the 5.0 has the brightest light for use in those dark nether regions. Join the 10 million men who trust Manscaped for their grooming needs. Head on over to manscaped.com forward slash five dash points and get 20% off whichever lawnmower you choose, plus free international shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com forward slash five dash points for 20% off and free international shipping. Antonio Ramiro Romo was born in San Diego, the son of a naval officer, and grew up in Burlington, Wisconsin, where his father worked as a carpenter, while his mother was a grocery store clerk. Tony Romo was an athlete in high school, not just a football player. He played golf, tennis, and basketball, starting for Burlington High School's varsity team, where he averaged 24, eight and five, and was named to the All Racine County team, alongside some guy named Karan Butler. Romo didn't start at quarterback until his junior season in 1996, and despite earning numerous honors in Wisconsin, his team finished with a 3-6 record in Romo's senior season. He could have easily kept playing basketball. He was offered spots from a handful of mid-major teams, but Romo sought a different route. He was going to play football. Eastern Illinois University is far from a football powerhouse. I mean, anytime a direction is in a school name, you know they aren't a sought after school. But they have a great lineage of quarterbacks, sort of. It's where Super Bowl champion head coaches Mike Shanahan and Sean Payton played QB before they figured out that they were coaches. Or terrible actors. Romo wasn't undersized or underskilled and he threw for 82 touchdown passes in three years, but the NFL was not impressed. Ahead of the 2003 NFL draft, Romo didn't even receive an invite to the combine. Well, not exactly at least. At the last minute, he was offered a chance to throw passes to other prospects during drills, not officially participating as a prospect himself, basically a drill monkey. Still, he got on a few scouts' radars, not just enough to warrant them using a draft pick on him. A name from the past wanted him bad, though. Broncos head coach and EIU alum Mike Shanahan said in 2010 that Denver had offered Romo a contract and the bid was 20,000 to come to the Mile High City. The Dallas Cowboys offered him 10,000. And guess who facilitated that? The other Eastern Illinois quarterback of the past, Sean Payton, who was coaching for the Cowboys at the time. Despite the financial disparity, Romo opted for Dallas, believing that he had a better opportunity to compete for a roster spot. He was right, just not right away. Initially pegged as the third string quarterback behind Quincy Carter and Chad Hutchinson in the 2003 training camp, Romo faced an uphill battle for recognition and a spot on the roster. The following year brought more uncertainty as the Cowboys released Hutchinson and acquired Vinny Testaverde, alongside trading for Drew Henson from the Houston Texans. Despite his low spot on the Cowboys totem pole, Romo found a niche as the holder for place kicks during the 2004 and 2005 season. Hey, a lot of us started at the bottom. 
handling balls. However, his moment in the spotlight arrived unexpectedly during a 2004 preseason game against the Oakland Raiders. With mere seconds remaining, Romo, then a third string quarterback, rushed for a game winning touchdown, which was completely meaningless. The tide began to turn in 2005 when Romo ascended to the role of the Cowboys' second string quarterback. His strong performances in the preseason caught the attention of many, including Sean Payton, now the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. Payton even offered a third round draft pick for Romo in 2006. However, Jerry Jones held firm, demanding nothing less than a second round pick for the promising quarterback. I'd say it worked out for both parties. Remember, Amari Cooper went for a fifth round pick. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Initially serving as the understudy to starter Drew Bledsoe in 2006, Romo got his first taste of regular season action on October 15th against the Houston Texans. He connected with wide receiver Sam Hurd for a 33 yard completion, followed by a two yard touchdown pass to Terrell Owens. When Bill Parcells finally yanked Bledsoe for Romo against the New York Giants, Romo wasn't exactly an immediate success, throwing three interceptions, including a pick six. Despite the rocky debut, his resilience was evident and he was named the starting quarterback. Romo seized the opportunity, leading the Cowboys to a resounding 35-14 victory over the Carolina Panthers. Romo had led the Cowboys to the playoffs and the hype train in Dallas was starting and the debates on Romo would get underway. As the postseason arrived, Romo found himself in a pivotal moment against the Seattle Seahawks in the NFC wildcard round. With the game hanging in the balance, Romo was still serving as the holder for a potential game tying extra point, and well, we all know what happened. In the 2007 season opener, Romo picked up where he left off with four touchdown passes and a rushing TD. In a week five clash against the Buffalo Bills on Monday night, Romo threw five interceptions yet managed to lead the Cowboys to a narrow, ultra dramatic victory. It was clear that with this guy, it was feast or famine. Romo's talent was undeniable. He shattered franchise records, surpassing Danny White's touchdown record, and became the first Cowboys quarterback to exceed 4,000 yards in a season. More importantly, he led the Cowboys to a 13-3 record and a playoff berth. And when you're a great Cowboys quarterback, you're a fucking celebrity. In November 2007, Romo started dating singer-actress Jessica Simpson, and I use the term actress loosely. A month later, Simpson attended a Cowboys-Eagles game at Texas Stadium, where Romo had a poor performance and a loss to the Eagles. And when the Cowboys lost, the couple became a magnet for blame. Simpson and Romo walked, so Taylor and Travis could run. Fast forward, the Cowboys were set to play the wildcard Giants at home in the divisional round. Dallas was trying to reach the NFC title game for the first time in over a decade. Controversy arose when during their bye week, photos surfaced of Romo, along with teammates Jason Witten and Bobby Carpenter vacationing in Cabo San Lucas with Jessica Simpson. Cabo is where you go after your season ends, not before it. Troy Aikman was critical, saying, you don't go to Cabo the week before a playoff game. You just don't do it. That's, that's my Troy Aikman. Well, of course they lost, and Romo didn't have all that great of a game. The photos became front page news, and it was clear Romo was the lightning rod for both adoration and disdain. Romo broke it off with Simpson in 2009, but he bounced back with his new girlfriend and future wife, Candace Crawford. And the heat was somewhat off of Romo as a tabloid target. He eventually won a playoff game in 2009 and again in 2014 before falling in the divisional round in both years. Also, Dez caught it. However, injuries plagued his later years in Dallas, including a season-ending herniated disc in 2003 and a broken collarbone in 2015, effectively killing Dallas's chances for contending for playoff spots. In 2016, Romo watched his career come full circle as a compression fracture to his vertebrae sidelined him for the first 10 games of the season. His absence paved the way for rookie and new Dallas lightning rod Dak Prescott to shine. It's not always easy to watch. I think anybody who's been in this position understands that. What is clear is that I was that kid once, stepping in, having to prove yourself. I remember the feeling like it was yesterday. Still, his stance as a polarizing player only strengthened as his career went on. In the years before he got Wally Pip, debates ran rampant over his ability to get the Cowboys over the hump. If you were a fan of a team in the NFC East, you hated him for his escapability. If you were a Cowboys fan, you loved his clutchness and his ability to always find Jason Witten near the end of games. Nobody had a neutral opinion on Romo. It was either hate or love. 
nothing in between. Romo would announce his retirement from the NFL in the 2017 season. But he had something on the horizon. No, not the NBA. Although, yes, there was this bizarre Maverick for a day retirement where Romo dressed in full uniform and sat on the Mavs bench in Dallas during their final home game in 2017. Here's what really was on the horizon. Romo joined CBS Sports as the lead color analyst for their NFL broadcast, teaming up with play-by-play -play announcer Jim Nance. The move displaced Phil Simms from the broadcast booth. There were plenty of questions about him immediately stepping into the top position ahead of season broadcasters like Dan Fouts, Trent Green, or Rich Gannon, who held positions two through four at CBS. During week one, Phil Simms playfully asked Romo, how does that seed feel? As the 2017 NFL season progressed and the first time broadcaster got his chance, Romo garnered widespread acclaim for his analysis, particularly for his unbridled enthusiasm and his knack for predicting offensive plays and deciphering defensive formations from the booth. He was hailed as a psychic. It was fun. It was astonishing. It was novel. And over the years, his act has gotten a little tiresome. So look, look at this, Jim. This is like how you ran in high school. Look exactly. at that perfect form. Some have speculated that Romo's dwindling psychic ability was a direct order from the league, or perhaps the product of being seven years removed from the field itself. Once America's broadcast darling, Romo's enthusiasm and penchant for filling up any dead air has turned the internet largely against him. He was criticized for his talking over the Chiefs walk-off touchdown. In Super Bowl 58. Can only feel the number of people out there being like, what's going on? Tony Romo's performance during his final broadcast of the season Sunday encapsulated all of his shortcomings. Constantly shouting at the viewer, offering inane analysis, struggling to make sense, wrote Alex Reimer of Odyssey. Each week during the playoffs, he reached a new low. Damn, that's harsh, bro. Criticism aside, CBS paid him $180 million for 10 years in 2017, so they feel his gum clapping is worth something. Besides running his mouth, he's also a decent golfer. He's played in PGA Tour events, but didn't make the cut, finishing dead last in an event in 2018. But later that year, he achieved a glorious victory in the American Century Championship, a celebrity tournament. So love him or hate him, Tony Romo, finally won something.